watching it. Um, a really, really big, big for me. Um, so yeah, um, just keep it, keep it a buck fifty out there, and we'll try to on our end as well. Um, the the Twitch just keeps on changing, and I'm surprised that people keep on coming here to watch these runs. I'll have Fruban in. A, soon oh we are at 81 dollars thank you very much um uh yeah so just keep on donating keep on watching watching is the most important as i as i always say uh it's a huge deal and uh yeah Hello folks, uh, give me a second here, you're about to lose capture for a second, that's on my end. <laughs> my capture card likes to do this where it gets rid of my actual monitor for some reason, and I have to actually fiddle around with it to get it back, but here we are. This is, this is it. This is gonna be the kind of continuation of the Zero to Free that we did for the last really, really long one. Uh, let me just double check my options are correct. Yes, they are. Good. So Yes, good. This is going to be the start. We're going to get going because we're going to be here a while. Uh, Yakuza Falls speedrun has changed massively in the last week. I'll talk about that when we start. Anyway, we're going to get going in three, two, one, go. Uh, something also to note as we actually get started here is that the every single the runs for Yakuza four and five, uh, these are done on. The PS4 remasters, I'm on PS5, but even if we were always on PS4, we want to do all of these with a brand new profile. Um, the... We need inventory space. We always needed inventory space with the old route for Yakuza 4, but we now have a brand new route for Yakuza 4 that just basically... <sighs> it came along within the last... Four or five days. Um, it's interesting. It makes it 100% marathon safe. We've essentially, because of this, eliminated what used to happen in the old route for Yakuza 4 is when we get two and a half hours into the run and we get to Kiryu's part, we have this 50-50 bet and you have to pass that 50-50 bet to be able to continue the run. The new route gets rid of that completely. Unfortunately, <laughs> Yakuza 4's runs become a little bit dumb because of that. I'm not dumb in the hard way, dumb in the what is actually going on kind of way. You'll see in about, probably about 30 minutes or so. But essentially the start of the run is going to be somewhat similar to the old route. I'm going to be picking up certain items here with Akiyama. I'm picking up six Tarriners, we don't want that many, and we want four Sake. That's all we want. Use, what we used to do was get 16 Tarriners and four Sake. Now we need inventory space. Inventory space is very, very important. That's another reason why we use pre fresh profiles for all of this. Is if you have the save data 
from some of the older Yakuza games, you will actually have a couple of, like, extra save DLC kind of items in your inventory, and they just clog it all up. I'm still going to be grabbing the spare EXP here just in case. I'm fairly certain I actually don't need to anymore. But this is the first of the tutorials. Yakuza 4's tutorials are some of the best tutorials in terms of Yakuza speedruns, because we don't have to do them. Like, we just don't have to do them. They are fantastic. The easy and quick way to deal with this first set of enemies is to go into our items, use one of the towers that we just got, and we're going to do a couple of really painful looking heat moves to them. As you can see, that does an entire HP bar and a half's worth of damage. The bike that's next to me here, I'm also hoping that they all kind of congregate around, because if I can hit them with that, it's going to do an insane amount of damage. It's going to end this fight a lot faster if possible. You can actually do two different heat attacks on this uh, on this kind of hole here. That's the better one. Unfortunately, that did not get everybody, which sucks. This is going to be extra combos. Hit one on the ground to take you out. Unfortunately, you fell down, which is a shame. I was hoping this guy wasn't the one that got feared. So every single fight... This is going to become very, very important in Yakuza 5 later on. I'll explain it a bit more there. Every single fight has one enemy that kind of operates as like the the leader of the fight in the next tutorial that's coming up i actually know which one that is what happens when the leader goes down is that the enemies will either get enraged or fearful as you saw there one of the enemies actually fell to the ground he got fearful enemies can react in a couple of different ways some of them don't even react at all sometimes the fearful state is kind of a pain in a lot of cases because we kind of want to hit the enemy but in some cases it's going to be really nice later on when we get a specific skill, uh, which won't be coming just yet, but it will be coming later on. And you're probably wondering who this is we're playing as, if you've only seen a couple of the Yakuza games. This is actually Akiyama. He is your first playable protagonist for Yakuza 4. Unsurprisingly, Yakuza 4 has four of them. <laughs> Hence, Yakuza 4. You'd be surprised to learn that Yakuza 5 has five of them, as you'll see in about three hours' time. So, thanks to the end of the last fight, you actually start with four heat for this fight. This is why you don't need four towers for this fight, only three. And every single heat attack that you can get off from this left-hand side here is really nice because it just takes care of the enemies instantly. You would think that the two guys in the suits here would be your leader enemy. They actually are not. It's actually the guy that is not in the suit that's left. So I won. I'm glad I got this guy. The other guy tried to walk in the way, which would have been bad, because then this guy would have gone on the ground if I took out the other guy first, which would have made ending this fight a lot harder. Ooh, I forgot that was my weapons. Whoops. Menuing! Oh, I should mention that about Yakuza 4. Menuing in Yakuza 4 is one of the worst Yakuza to do menuing in, because for some bizarre no unknown reason, don't know why, the remaster of Yakuza 4 has menu delay. Oh. I can't tell you why. <laughs> it, it just does. Um, so it's not very nice to play around with. Um, but at the very... Well, at the very least, the old route, we didn't have to do that much menuing. Now, we do. So, we met up with a couple of friendly yakas are in the neighborhood. These guys aren't. These guys are from the Ueno well, you Sewa clan. And they're making trouble here in Kamarocho, in a district where they really should not be. So, we're going to deal with Ihara. I do need to do one level up real quick. This is the trouble with the new route, is I'm forgetting to do the important things, like level up Essence of Finishing, and more importantly, Boozer's Law. Boozer's Law is an upgrade that allows me to do more damage when I'm drunk, and that's why we took the sake. Watch Ihara is moving a direction I do not want him to go in. That's a shame. I wanted to avoid this. I'm going to cancel this out intentionally so that I don't lose too much time. This is not a good fight so far. I kind of let Ihara up, which was really bad. Not getting many weapon hits either. Not a good fight. <laughs> not, not a good Ihara fight at all. Um... There wasn't that many weapon hits, which really sucks. A lot of your damage in this fight comes from knocking Ihara into the furniture. This is Arai. Uh, that bullet wound that he's got is just a flesh wound. It's just a graze, even though the bullet kind of went in him. Don't worry about that. 
he certainly won't worry about that. He's about to shrug that off. So, the Ueno Sewa guys ran off. We're now going to leave. I'm going to get a call from our secretary, who's going to start saying about that there's a big fight outside from a couple of Ueno guys, and they have guns. The... Nice, uh, the nice. The unnice thing about Yakuza 4 is that these voice cutscenes here, the only way to get through these is to tap the button really fast, and it sucks because there's a lot of these in Yakuza 4 and they hurt a lot. Normalized turbo controllers, thank you very much. <laughs> so we're now just going to run back across Kamurocho. My arm actually hurts after that. That's why I don't run Yakuza 4 that often. This is loud. I can't do anything about this. I apologize. This is the only part of Yakuza 4 that gets really loud. <laughs> It'll, it'll normalize itself once we're out of here. Just enjoy the nice sick jazz as we're running through Kamurocho. The nice thing is there's no fight spawns here. What we used to do was get the weapon van that's behind me currently. We don't do that in this run anymore because we don't need those weapons. We get different weapons. But we're gonna go back to the office. We're gonna skip through a couple of scenes. And we are going to find... We're going to find Arai uh, with Ihara, who we just beat up. And it seems as though Arai has shot Ihara. And then Arai is going to go missing and the police are going to mistakenly arrest us. And it's your first sighting of what is actually our third playable character, Tanamura. But you'll see him later. You'll see him much, much later. Tanamura is the character that gets affected the most by the route change. Like, his entire route just basically got completely turned on its head. With Akiyama here, we have to still do well in the first two chapters, and kind of three. Um, Saijima's completely the same for the first three chapters. Oops, I went that way. Yax 4 Taxi List is reversed, you know this. Learning the taxi list in Yakuza games sucks. <laughs> Some Yakuza games, like Yakuza 4, decide to turn the taxi list completely upside down. Yakuza 4's taxi list is unique in that it's the only one that does that. Thank you, Yakuza 4. Appreciate you. <laughs> but Akiyama's first few chapters are going to be mostly the same. We're going to take a little bit of a detour in this chapter that we didn't do before. Because we need to make some money on Akiyama. I've got a very short form set of notes next to me. I keep looking back on just to make sure I remember everything that I need to actually learn. I'm not liking what Dr. T-Jops is saying right now. I'm ignoring it. <laughs> We've been finding very cursed things about this run this week. You're going to see them later on. <laughs> this this run is... Uh... God. <clears throat> it's awful. <laughs> it's, it, it's awful now. <laughs> See, we, we wanted, like, we asked for, like, something to remove the 50-50 so we could guarantee ending runs instead of losing them two and a half hours in. And we got cursed in return because somebody came along and said, hey, how do you like baseball bats? Great. <laughs> I've always maintained that baseball bats are only good in Kiwami 1. As it turns out, that's no longer a truthful statement. <laughs> As you will see again real soon. So, Akiyama is kind of a moneylender. The lady who came here earlier is Lily. Uh, she is here looking for a loan. We give out our loans with, like, no principal, no interest, etc. But on the condition that our clients obviously pass a couple of tests. We're going to go and do Lily's test later on. We're going to go and see Kido. There's going to be some trouble over in Kido's and Arai's family. The, I believe it's the Hatsushiba. I'm already wrong on that. That's a fight spawn in front of me. Yakuza 4 has some pretty nasty fight spawns. You're telling me that was close enough to start that fight? No, I disagree. But alright. <laughs> but alright. And it's the long start as well. That's a large lad as well. I would have gone past this guy. So, unfortunately, I now have to take care of this fight. I was hoping I didn't fight. Why can't I do my gear attack? This runs a lot. There you go. Thank you. Wow, I actually got a full fight spawn as well. That's terrible. That is actually one of the worst fight spawns I could get. Good start. You know what? I should probably just do... Yeah, at this point. Uh, double finishing. Triple finishing. 
Because I was going to do this in the next fight anyway, but if I'm stuck in this one... Terrible. Terrible. <laughs> it's not a good time to get an early fight spawn. I'm actually a little, a little upset that counts as a fight because, yeah, that's how close it was to that. I'm, I'm a little upset about that. That, that's a fight spawn ahead of me as well. It's the guy above the ice cream. I see you, bud. I see you. Good. You go that way. I'm going this way. So despite the fact that that marker is over in Theatre Square, which is making a slight detour over here, we need to speak to this guy. So, in the old version of Yakuza 4's route, we speak to this guy on the final playable character. On this route, we speak to this character with the first playable character. Akiyama starts with a lot of money, which is nice. We don't need to do too much to get him enough money that we need. So, with this, we are going to now just carry on with the story. And we basically got the coin locker key radar, which is a thing. It's an item that shows you where the coin locker keys are. The nice thing here in this game is that it sells for something like 30 or 40,000. It sells for a lot of money. Or was it 60? It might be 60, actually. It sells for a lot of money. It sells for a, a, a lot of money, and we're going to be using that again very soon. <laughs> where you'll see the big, big change for the route, which we'll be getting in the next chapter. So, Kido's family boss has unfortunately been killed by somebody. They don't know who, but they feel like it may have been a woman because the boss was in a somewhat comprised position when he was killed, apparently. Here's some more of the Shibata family. These guys are a family who basically are kind of high in the Tojo, but not... How are you not dead? I'm not actually quite sure how you're not dead. This guy has two HP bars. Oh, come on, sword guy. Go to HP bar goes off the roof. He's not dead, by the way. Don't worry. I will prove he's not dead in a second while you're bouncing up all that. The idea of this fight is hopefully not to get grabbed by this guy 20 times, but also to try and hit multiple enemies in a row. Because that's how you get through this fight faster. That's better now. If this guy stops walking away. I just want to finish you at this point. Bad fights. He's a <clears throat> very, very bad fights. <laughs> See, he's back. Look, he's on the roof. He's fine. Don't worry about him. So, unfortunately, the police are going to turn up. <laughs> Again. At which point, we're going to get shown Yakuza 4's first chase section. This is what we like to call the reverse chase section because we're the ones being chased. Now, you might see that I am jumping a lot. In Yakuza 4's chase sections, if you jump, you get a little bit of a speed boost, which is very, very useful, especially when going up hills, like up ramps and stuff. This should always be X. And when you start from a stop start, you also go a lot faster, which is nice. So a lot of the chase sections, you will see me jump a lot. It's the end of that chapter. Bad chapter with that fight spawn. Ouch. But we're going to be going and seeing... We're going to be going and seeing the police anyway. We're going to go and see what's up with them and also try and get a bit of info ourselves. Unfortunately, Kido is also here. <clears throat> we're just going to go and have a conversation with Kido in the toilet. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't worry about it. I'm sure this is the most private place to have a conversation where literally nobody would ever be listening in on this conversation ever. Especially not a police officer who goes by the name of Sugiuchi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> mm. Mm. Not the smartest decision our protagonists have ever made, but here we are. <laughs> so, we're going to be getting into a bit of a tutorial here. It's going to look like a normal fight, and the first bit is going to be a normal fight. It's going to lead up into the first of our move masters in this game. Every single character has their own move master. Akiyama is the same. So I'm going to try and take care of this guy on this pipe if possible. He moves too far, which means he's not going to take that much damage. So I'm just going to take you out instead. Reason why I go for the other guy instead of finishing this guy off is he's the leader, quotation marks, of this fight. So the other guy will go down in fear if I do do that to him. Although that can also, obviously, sometimes he'll go down in fear, sometimes he won't. And if he doesn't, he actually starts blocking your attacks, which is really frustrating. 
This is Saigo. <laughs> Saigo is Akiyama's move master. So we're now going to get tutorialized. Wait for it. That man just took our wallet. We're going to get tutorialized on the actual chase sections where we're doing the chasing this time. It's a little bit of a shame because we need that money. We're very, very desperate for that money. So we're going to be hopefully catching up to him. We can't actually end this chase section early. You have to be a bit careful. Text box is going to mess me up. I have to do extra hits here now. Should be able to finish it now. Bit slow. Not good. Bit slow. Not good. It's fine. But Saigo's going to take us up to the roof for a conversation. We're not going to do anything in this conversation. Don't worry about it. <laughs> But you can come visit Saigo here at any time. Uh, we used to, in the very, very, very old movement route, uh, we used to actually see this guy up on this roof as we went by with another character. Not happening in the in the route that we do since a couple of months ago, and obviously the new route as well. Interestingly enough, I'll talk about it when we get there later. There is actually, I don't know why this made me think of it, there is actually a skip in this game uh, that we don't go for, because the chance of getting it is exceptionally low. Uh, and if we mess it up, it gives us a game over. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe another time. Maybe we can get it consistent. That's a fight spawn, so I'm going to move away from that. If you're wondering why, this is actually important, if you're wondering why I'm panning the camera down, it's because it's despawning all of the civilians. You saw that lady was walking forward. She's still there, but the people who are further down aren't there. There's basically like a, a hard limit on like the range on which it works, and it also doesn't work on fight spawns either, so it makes it a lot easier to figure out which like, which of the people standing around are fight spawns, he's here by the way, and which of the people are just normal pedestrians. There are some normal pedestrians, like the two people that were standing to the side, or the person that was in front of the Akushimaru, that you'll see yeah, every single time. Those are fixed spawns, some NPCs just have fixed spawns, it is what it is. But, Sugiyuchi here is trying to get us, he's trying to get us to do a little bit of digging for him. He's trying to find some info out. He's also let Bree that the Tojo are up to no good again. They're in trouble. Who would have guessed? I wouldn't have guessed. I definitely wouldn't have guessed. The detective here is a little bit of a peeping Tom. Yes. So, Lily is back. We are going to take her to do her test now for her big money loan. So... What we need to do first is we need to... The test that we need to do for Lily is we have told her to become the number one hostess at a specific cabaret club that has an affiliation with Akiyama. We're going to go and get her a dress and a necklace so that she can obviously have a nice dress. This is all leading up to the big initial uh, reveal for the big mini game in this game, which is the cabaret mini game. We will have to do it in game, and there's a very hot tip coming up for if you're playing it casually and want to go faster. You can get some really nasty fight spawns down here, but thankfully there's nothing down here for once. Doesn't matter which of these you pick, just obviously pick the first one, it's quicker. Then we're going to go to La Marche to get an accessory, and then we're going to change the route. This is where the new route is going to start to come into play. If you get too close to bikes and stuff, you start slowing down. <laughs> It's the same for any Yakuza game. You get too close to the sides of the walls, and it, in an effort to stop you from going out of bounds, the Yakuza games don't like you going close to walls. We actually have working out of bounds in 0k1, technically, 5, which hopefully you'll be seeing in, with this guy actually, in about 5, 6 hours, maybe? Something like that? I think? I don't know. I don't know any concept of time right now. It's two in the morning. <laughs> so, we're going to go to episode. I'm going to have to do a little bit of extra selling because I got an item from that optional fight. So, we're going to sell. He's down an X and the lock key rate. It's actually 35k, so it was in the middle of my figures. And what we're going to do is we're going to buy, very importantly, as many metal bats as we can carry. That's important. That is surprisingly important, as you'll see coming up. 
Now I get to run through the alleyways and look out for fight spawns. I hate this run. This run sucks. This run really sucks. Like, this this pathway here, there's a chance to get a fight spawn here, there's a chance to get a fight spawn here, which thankfully not. That's why I panned my camera up to see if there's one ahead of me. There can be one on the right here as well, which, no, that's a normal NPC. He'll always spawn here. And the nice thing about going this way is it does avoid two sub-stories that are in front of the club. There's one that occurs if you get close to it, and the other one you actually have to, like, actually speak to the people, which is nice. It means you don't have to worry too much about, um accidentally activating it so again this is going to be the start of the cabaret stuff we do have to do a tiny bit of this for story purposes there's literally no way to fail this as you will see we basically put on the dress and the accessory that we bought this is what happens in the cabaret all of the different dresses and accessories are all different stances you can see this is a very big mini game there's a couple of cabaret girls that you can get in the game and then you have to essentially just make them number one it's very long. Uh, it's part of the completion list. If you're going for the all platinum, if you're going for the platinum trophy, it's part of that. Good luck. Uh, there's another more, another bigger aspect of it coming up in a second that actually has the speed tech to it, which is nice. You won't be seeing that until the next chapter. We only have one last thing left to do in this chapter, which is go on a quotation marks a date with Lily herself. We need to go and meet her at Theatre Square. I don't know why we're meeting at Theatre Square when we're both at the club. I spawn on the left there. The guy with the trainers. This guy's fine. He's just in on the fight. The guy behind me saw me in the end, which hmm, surprised he actually saw that. I like having a look around here to the right. Because any fight spawns that are here are gonna persist through this cutscene. And something very important about the PS3 Yakuza's is fight spawns persist through cutscenes. That's going to become a problem in Yakuza 5. I'm not going to start talking about how horrific Yakuza 5 is going to be to run tonight until we get there, because Yakuza 5 and its fight spawns are pure evil. Hopefully you won't see that, but you are probably going to see it, because that's Yakuza 5 in a nutshell. I adore Yakuza 5's run, but Yakuza 5's fight spawns are genuinely, genuinely evil. So we're going to be heading to the Champion District, so it's a little quicker to run over there. And then we're going to be getting into the fight on the roof. Now, I'm going to be... That's a fight spawn there. I'm going to be explaining something in this fight that doesn't really factor into the run anymore. It did with the old route that we were using up until last week. Um, this game's a bit dumb. So, for some reason, this game is very restrictive with weapons. You obviously saw me buy a whole bunch of baseball bats. The nice thing is that every character in this game can equip baseball bats. There are some weapons that some characters can't equip. For example, Akiyama here, he's not a member of the Yakuza, therefore he can't use guns. However, you're about to see me use a gun. It's not a speed strat or speed tech or anything like that, it's the dumb way this game works. You cannot equip... Oh, by the way, this is the, uh, this is the new strat, by the way. In enjoy this. Baseball bats are stupid. So, there's a gun in this fight. You're not dead. You're not dead. Jeez. You might be wondering then, if I can't use guns, how can I just use that gun? Despite the fact that Akiyama can't equip... Oh, I think I kept that bat. Yo, nice. If you can't equip a weapon... But it is in the fight that you are doing, you can pick up and use that weapon. So despite the fact that Akiyama can't use guns, Akiyama just used guns. <laughs> it, it's a little bit of a stupid rule, but that's the way that it is. <laughs> it, it, it's really stupid because there's certain characters that in the old route really would have benefited from guns. And there's one character that uses a gun in their profession, in a cutscene, in a set piece, in an actual taunt that can't use guns. I'll moan about that in about two hours time. <laughs> it is frustrating to say the least. 
Once again, voice guard scenes. We get Akiyama's backstory. He used to be a part of Toto Bank as an accountant, and somebody basically embezzled, and the company thought that it was Akiyama, and basically somebody pinned it on him. It got him fired from his job, and you'll see here that this is actually one of the scenes from the ending of Yakuza 1. When the Millennium Tower exploded and all the money at the end of the Yakuza 1 flew out of the Millennium Tower, Akiyama was lucky enough to get enough of it, and of course with his knowledge of finance, enough to be able to reinvest and basically build up a very, very large fortune. So, we're going to be heading back to the club. We want to go... We're trying to investigate Lily. We have our suspicions that Lily may not be who she says she is. So we're doing our, our due diligence and doing a little bit of a background check. So Lily had a specific lighter from a club over in the Champion District. We were going to go over to that, but we have been called over to the club. That's a fight spawn. It's a bad one. I hope you didn't notice me. Nice to see I'm getting some bad luck on my fight spawns today. <laughs> if I could get my... I'd honestly take my bad luck for fight spawns from this game and have good luck with fight spawns in five, because that will literally save me like 10 to 15 minutes. No joke. <laughs> no, no joke. <laughs> Yakuza 5 is evil. I love it. <laughs> Yakuza 5 is a good speedrun. Horrible to try and get away from fight spawns, but good speedrun. So that money that we just got there isn't our own personal money, which is a shame, because otherwise we'd probably just use that for the baseball bats. So here's the second part of the cabaret minigame. You're supposed to go around the club and you'll see little text boxes that tell you what all the patrons want to see from the specific hostesses. Now, here's the trick. Most people don't know that all you need to do is go through free text boxes and then go back. I keep miss saying who actually was credited with finding this. It was either, I think it was somebody on game FAQs. I keep saying it was one of the runners in our community. So I'm just going to say shout outs to whoever found this out. So when you're doing this casually, you don't have to, you don't have to walk around the entire club. You just have to go there, get one text box, cancel it out twice by speaking to obviously the hostess again, and then you just walk back. This literally, every time you do this, saves you a good, like probably 30 to 45 seconds every single time you come out in the club. So if you're doing this casually, this is a very, very quick and easy method of making this minigame go way faster. Way faster. And now we're going to go over to the Champion District. Don't worry about this guy. He's a sub story. He's fine. <laughs> he's, he's fine. Don't worry about him. Uh, I'm keeping an eye out for fight spawns as I go over that one. I'm trying to go to the... I like going this way more, even though this way is actually in some ways a little bit more problematic than going the other way. The problem with going this way is there can be a fight spawn around this corner to the left, exactly in front of the place that I need to get to, which is here. Thankfully not. So we're in the Champion District, there's a whole bunch of like a camera bars in the area. The bar that we're looking for is this one right here. So we're going to be going in here. After having a conversation with this camera here. And then we're going to go into the back. And we are going to find, would you believe... Wait for it. Moider. So. What we're going to do is we need to... There's three things to look at in this room. You need to look at the jacket, which for some reason you might have noticed I looked at the bloodstain there. For some reason, the bloodstain and the jacket, their hitboxes are reversed. And for some reason, the blood, the bloodstain's hitbox is bigger towards the door. I don't know why. It just is. <laughs> so if you turn left at the start, you'll always guarantee to get the jacket. And then you can just get the lighter off the table. Otherwise, you're trying to fiddle not hitting the bloodstain, which is the one that you don't need to see. It's really... Really weird. Really, really weird. But that's the way the hitboxes work. Hitboxes in the Yakuza games can be both fantastic and also absolutely awful. That's a fight spawn right in front of that guy. Jeez. I mean, I'll take these fight spawns as long as I don't get one outside of Sky Finance. That would be really bad. 
You can get some very, very nasty fight spawns down the street. Like that one. Ah, oh, come on, bud. Now, as you can see running backwards, this unfortunately does respawn in the NPCs. So, as you saw there, I turned my camera specifically so I could despawn the NPCs that were going to be in the way here so I could get across here a little bit easier. That is not something you can do with every Yakuza game. It's very much a PS3 Yakuza exclusive feature. The nice thing is the PS2 Yakuza's, um, the fight spawns are random, but they're always spawned in set places. So when you learn where those set places are, you don't have to worry about any fight spawns in that game. There are some that are a bit tricky to avoid, but you learn how to obviously avoid them. There's a way to avoid every single one in that game. Um, in both those games, I should say. In the PS3 era, we do camera panning. This is Mac, by the way. He's your revelation master in this game. Now, unlike Yakuza 3, which had an unskippable revelation, unfortunately for Mac, he's going to give us the option to skip this revelation, which is a genuine shame. Because it's one of the best ones in the series. Thanks, Mac. It's in about three hours, Mac. He'll be back one more time. We love Mac. Mac is awesome. So, unfortunately, somebody attacked our office, stole our client registry, assaulted Hannah, and also kidnapped Kido. So, we're going to have to go and find out what's going on there. Mac, Mac just interrupts in the whole middle of that. It's, it's not exactly the most opportune time, Mac, but fair enough. Also, if you look at the minimap, you'll see that there are no substory markers. There's one substory marker on the right there, but the normal substory markers that are behind us there aren't there. Those are because those are ones that require Hannah. Now, we're going to speak to this guy here. Specifically, that's a fight spawn ahead of us as well. The top option is the one you want to do. If you pick the bottom option, you have to fight those three Yakuza in the background there. But by picking the top option, you can just skip past and go to the next story bit. This is a fight spawn here. Please get out of my way. Thank you. I, ooh, I almost walked into his range. That would have been uh, pretty bad. Now, if these guys just got out of the way, there's a boss fight right here. <clears throat> Literally, there is a boss fight right beneath them. If they just got out of the way, we wouldn't have to do this big, long set piece that's about to occur. And this is where you're going to see how dumb this new route is. That guy was closer than I expected him to be, but it's fine. Nope, leave me alone. The new route is very, very simple. <laughs> There's a little bit of strategy to it. There's a lot of luck to it. Uh, but... Essentially, it's become very much akin to the new Yakuza Zero route in the... God, it's so simple that it literally doesn't matter. It's terrible. So, these are members of the Hatsushiba clan. We're going to be hitting this guy. If you're wondering why I attack first, it's because that then gets me to lock onto the person that I hit. So then I know I can just basically swing and I'm going in that way. What I'm doing is cancelling out my normal attacks with a flurry attack. It's something that you can do with any weapon that has a flurry. This was found by Metza, who first did it with the Chinese broadsword, actually. And then somebody came along and said, why don't you just use baseball bats? They're really cheap at Ebersu. And that's the origin of this new route that's absolutely terrible. <laughs> But as you can see, when I use the base back, if you look in the top left at the durability, you'll see the durability takes literally 10 off every single time you use it. It's not the best thing I've ever it. It's terrible, actually. The second and fourth hit will always stun. The first and last hit will always do the most damage. For these enemies, we will have to take care of them later. I'm not going to deal with them just yet. Actually, are those ones that despawn? These might be the ones that despawn. I am going to be putting on fresh base bats before I go in here. You might be wondering why I'm not using my, my boozer's law. We don't need it here. We'll need it in a bit. We do not need it in this set piece because of how good base bats are. Now, every enemy again in this part does have to go down, but the important one is the guy in the perk. Shame that he actually managed to get out of me there. But as long as you do a normal attack first, you shouldn't miss the enemies with your bat hit. Or with your bat flurry, I should say. So we find that this door is locked. There is a friend of his who will open the door, but we need to make sure we take care of all the enemies on the way. Which, as you can see, the rest of these spawn. It's really nice because the only guy 
in that last fight, the only guy that you have to really, like, take care of is the guy in the purple tracksuit. But after that bit, you still have to take care of all the enemies. There's going to be enemy spawns here. So you do have to take care of everybody here. I'm kind of hoping that we're getting a bit closer than this. But Again, here's the here's the lock aspect. And you need everybody to get a bit closer. It's probably not Flurry, that guy. I think normal attacks would probably just take care of him a lot quicker. This guy has two HP bars. Look at his HP bar. This is the power of these bats. I actually missed the last hit. That's it. I'll just do it here. Okay. It's the slow one, but it'll take him out. And I don't have to waste any more of my bats. I am trying, specifically, to not use up too many bats with Akiyama. I sh should be fine. Ideally, with Akiyama, I want to come out of his part with three full bats. Ideally. Which, as you can see, we do have a lot of them there. When we get to the next bit, I'm going to get out a bat that will fear some people. Looking good because these are the two nasty ones. Kasai is still up. Should be fine if he doesn't do that. He likes to dodge. I'm glad he locked onto the old man. Though. I think I'll do the old fashioned way here. Didn't work, so I didn't have the Saki on, of course, right? But I want to use the Saki just yet. I want to hold on to it. Oh, dear, dear. So hopefully, in this room... Oh, but you didn't run forward. That's interesting. Usually he runs forward. But with the right angle, and hopefully without this guy guarding everything, you can actually get them all in one circle. Unfortunately, that guy decided to guard with the sofa. Enemies with weapons are... Your biggest enemy in this new route because enemies with weapons will guard against your flurry hits and you won't do anything. The guy in front of us actually has a green HP bar, which as you can probably guess is gonna go down pretty fast. I was hoping that the old guy wouldn't have dragged him over there, but. That's gonna essence of finishing. I'm trying as well to keep a internal counter of how many essence of finishes I've done because if I could keep one specific essence of finishing for the finale, I'm going to get to do a bunch more damage to one of the final bosses. Okay, so that's my left one used up and I think my up one used up. So, this is the head of Hatsushiba Clan. This is Midori Akawa. He has a gun. He has no chill either. He just hits you. I don't have any bats. Okay, fair enough. Uh, two for Minami, I guess. Could you not? Easy difficulty. <laughs> so, the important thing to remember for this fight is that I need to use a sake. The important thing to remember for this fight is where you finish that guy off. He's going to drop his gun. We're specifically going to leave that gun on the ground for now. I'm going to now sake up. Could have waited until the next part. Honestly. That's a bad baseball bat, honestly. This is not good. These are some terrible flurries. So, the reason why you want to avoid your field of heat in the first chapter is because of this one. You cannot avoid this field of heat. I have full heat, so I have a triangle. And with that, we want to go and grab the gun. Because, unfortunately, Midori Akawa in this phase is really nasty with that chainsaw. And thankfully, with the gun that he drops, it's just enough bullets to take him out before he can do anything. Midori Akawa in that phase with the chainsaw gets an insane amount of hyper armor. So you want to be very, very careful about him trying to attack you because he can just he can just mess you up like completely that's why leaving the gun for that phase is really nice the bat can miss its flurries if he tries to do his hyper armor stuff so gun is still very nice in that one and again as we said earlier akiyama is not supposed to be able to use guns but if the gun is in the fight he will use guns fight spawn there i could go this way well, i noticed that early i really am getting some aggressive fight spawns tonight it's unfortunate. I 
Thankfully, we haven't got the worst one yet. The worst fight spawn you can get is one that appears right here. It literally blocks the way to Sky Finance the quick way. But we get to we get to chill for a little bit. We're gonna go and do one final round of the cabaret with Lily. And the thing is, in the last round of the cabaret, she wasn't getting requested by anybody, and she's not gonna get requested by anybody this time. So you would think that means she won't hit her target, but again, because it's story-based, she will. <laughs> this is why the cabaret doesn't matter if you do well or not. It literally does not matter. The story one is rigged. Everything after the story one is not rigged. That's why it's one on the left, so I cut to the right. Be very careful up here now because of that. The guy on the right there at the pole, he is a substory, so is this guy, but again, you have to actually, like, speak to him to start his substory. The one at the pole, if you get too close, then it's just going to start, which is really bad. So once again, I'm just going to go to the club. You'd have a new option here where you can train up your hostesses to get specific, like, stats and stuff. You'll see again that nobody is getting Lily, so once again, one, two, three, and then we go back. Again, literally every time you do this, it saves you a good 30 to 45 seconds. Even if you're doing this casually. Like, I would recommend doing this if you want to do this minigame casually. It is very, very fast to do it this way. And one more time. Essentially, if you don't do it this way, you have to walk like halfway around the club and that, as you can probably guess, takes absolutely forever. And that should be the last time that we do the cabaret, which is nice. The cabaret is pretty long. Uh, it's an okay source of income, honestly, uh, but only income for the actual game itself. <laughs> It's a good way to lose income because you have to keep buying the dresses and stuff for all the hostesses. But thankfully, we don't have to touch that in the run again. We're going to go back to the office and we're going to get notified that Lily is going to have passed the test. Ah, the bad fight spawn. Hello. See, now I have to run this way because he's... Because he's a normal enemy, he actually runs really fast, so I have to go down the other alleyway, which, as you can probably guess, is much slower. Much slower. Okay. So despite the fact that nobody actually requested Lily, she's going to have managed to make a lot of money on that final day. And she has made more than the three million she was supposed to make. So we're going to go and meet Lily at the top of the Millennium Tower. Where nothing bad ever happens. You certainly aren't going to see something bad happen at the top of the Millennium Tower in all three runs tonight. <sighs> it's always the Millennium Tower. Thankfully, it's not always the Millennium Tower, but for the most part. It makes sense. It's a connected yak as a set of officers. <laughs> So. Shortcut scene I'm going. We are coming up to the end of Akiyama's part, which is nice. I need to do pretty well in the next boss fight to only use two bats if possible. Arigato. So, we're going to get some heartwarming moments between Akiyama and Lily. Akiyama's kind of falling for Lily because Lily looks strangely a lot like his ex-girlfriend, etc. You can see the Akiyama's motivation here, even though, you know, he is actually slightly in love with her. So, she's going to now disappear with the money. We're not going to see her again for quite a while. Quite a long while, actually. 
Hannah's getting released from the hospital. So we're going to go back to the office and see her. Hannah was very much against giving the money to Lily. And this phone call specifically is from the club over there. And this is where the game is telling you, hey, you want to come do the Cabaret Club minigame? Come, come do it. This, this is the time where it's open. But obviously, as I said earlier, we're not doing that. So instead, what we'll do is we'll go back to Sky Finance and go and see Hannah. That guy is surprising because he looks like a fight spawn, but he's actually not. Nice, no fight spawns. Oh, that's some terrible luck so far, but oh, it's all good. So, Hannah's back. We're going to say about, obviously, giving the money to Lily. Hannah's not happy about this, and Hannah's going to quit. So we're going to try and chase her down to stop her from leaving because Akiyama kind of realizes he can't operate without Hannah around. So once again, with these chase sections, we're going to be jumping a lot because it's faster. So you can't actually catch up with Hannah for obvious reasons. So we're going to cut a few corners sometimes which will make Hannah speed up. If you go ahead of the person that you're chasing, they will speed up a little bit. Also, if you get close enough, they will, if you're not supposed to catch up to them. Like, you'll see on the left, Hannah just has a big burst of speed there. It does again. Cool. Mm. And obviously, Hannah kind of knows Akiyama's deal at this point. And there she goes. Akiyama did not manage to convince Hannah to stay. Goodbye, best character in this game. Hannah's amazing. Hannah's great. And we're then going to get a phone call. There's a little bit of trouble going on at the cabaret club. Yakuza, who are looking for Lily. So we're going to head over there and do the final fight of Akiyama's section. This fight I am going to try and do in two baseball bats after after messing up some of my baseball bats earlier. It's very important I come out of Akiyama's part with three baseball bats. That's a fight spawn to the left. That's good. Okay. In the old route, we used to grab a locker key from the right there on a later character, which is the spicy knife. That was like the basis of big cheese for the end of the run, but we don't do that anymore. That guy was a fight spawn who was to the right of the uh, save point, so I'm glad I went to the left. And this is the final fight for Akiyama's part. <laughs> This is Minami of the Majima family. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go into my inventory, chug one of my last two remaining sakes, put on two baseball bats. Uh, yeah. Actually, I've got, ooh, I've got quite a lot left. I don't, I don't get that. So, I'm hoping to push Minami into a corner and bounce him off it so that he doesn't get up straight away. That sucks. That's what you don't want to see. This is the reason why we want to stop Minami from doing anything. If he does that again, this is going to be a very bad fight for me. But thankfully, that's the end of the fight. That was uh, salvaged after being a very bad fight. <laughs> that was very, very scary for a second there, but we are nicely out of that fight. Baseball bats, as you can see, are kind of stupid. Kind of really stupid. <laughs> Again, we're getting trophies because I'm on a guest account to not have my inventory filled with useless DLC stuff that we don't use. This is our second playable character, brand new to Yakuza 4. This is Tiger Saijima. Saijima used to be, or is, the anarchy of a Majima Goro. They got up to a hit a long, long time ago 
where Saejima took out a whole bunch of people with guns. <clears throat> Fun fact, Saejima can use guns in this run. <laughs> Used to. Doesn't anymore. But Saejima is on death row. <laughs> Obviously, that character that you saw... Obviously, the only other detailed character in this cutscene. That's Hamazaki. You may remember him from Yakuza 3. Hamazaki's redemption arc is beginning in this game. That's a nice first hit, not gonna lie. That's a very nice first hit. So, with this fight, ideally I will end it with heavy attacks, because that gives me a little bit more ESP to level up here. Not too bad. It's a little bit of a pain leveling at the end of the fight, because as you can see, it takes a bit longer to get out of the fight because it slows you down. Good start, at least. Very good start, at least. So, essentially, we get put in solitary for starting to incite a fight, despite the fact it wasn't, and Hamazaki turns up. Hamazaki needs to bust out of here. Hamazaki mm -hmm. was arrested here after the events of the end of Yakuza 3, where he stabbed Kiryu. <laughs> This place is basically a prison that's not on the map. It doesn't exist. So, Hamazaki wants to get something and escape from prison. He needs some muscle to be able to get out of prison with a muscle. <laughs> now, when you think Saijima gameplay in the Yakuza series, it's synonymous with prison sections. This is Yakuza 4's prison section. If you think this is the last time you're going to see Saijima in prison tonight, you are sorely mistaken. It's going to get worse. So, Hamazaki is relating the plan in that Saijima will raise a ruckus to take care of the guards whilst Hamazaki runs off. He's going to go to the warden's office to get the info that he needs. And then Saijima is going to follow him and they're going to escape together out of the courtyard with a grappling hook. Now the trouble is, we can't make a grappling hook, but that familiar face can. That is Kamiyama, but that's not the Kamiyama that we're used to. This is a different Kamiyama. This is Renji Kamiyama, who's the twin brother of the other Kamiyama who you've known from the other Yakuza games. They're twins. It's an excuse to have two Kamiyamas. So, we need to get a couple of items for Kamiyama. This is going to start the Yakuza 4 prison fetch quest. So... We're going to start by speaking to that guy, not that guy. This guy. Thank you. This guy has a big long chain. He doesn't want to give it to us, so we're going to make him give it to us, as you do. Saijima is an interesting character in the... He's... He plays very, very new. You've never played a character like him before in any of the Yax games. Ah, oh, this guy for once. This guy's a pain. He dodges, he grabs you, he blocks... He's the worst one out of all of these enemies, which is why I go up him first. The nice thing is you can actually, as you can see, hit enemies on the ground with Saijima. We're going to be doing that a lot. Saijima has a... I call it an almost infinite, because it's... you can have some enemies break out of it, and it's also very easy to drop. Um, but it is going to be an infinite for certain enemies that we're going to be utilizing a lot. Uh, I... So we now need a hook for the end of this giant chain. So we're going to go over here and hear about this guy on the right who has taken one of the garden hoes. Obviously, the end of the garden hoe will do for our grappling hook. He will give it to us if we get him a cigarette. So we're going to go and speak to this guy, who's probably the nicest inmate here because he kind of knows not to mess around with Saijima and just gives us the cigarette. Smart choice. What a nice person. One person in here you don't have to fight. So, we're then going to go back. And this guy is going to call us an idiot. How's he supposed to light the cigarette? It's not my problem, dude. You asked for a cigarette. So, we're going to have to go get the lighter. And after you have that conversation, the lighter then spawns on the map. It spawns over here. This does not spawn until the previous conversation is done. That's why you have to do things in this order. Otherwise, we would grab the lighter, obviously, a lot earlier on. We're going to take the lighter and the cigarette back to the dude, and you'll never guess what happens next. He's not going to give us the garden, though. <laughs> so, we're going to just have to deal with him as well.
If you can bounce this guy into the wall, it actually takes him out, which is really nice. Same with this guy, he's a bit far away though. Oh, that works. Nice. Not too bad. Now he's gonna give us the garden hoe. <laughs> also quotation marks in the text ch in the chat there that says borrowed hoe. <laughs> Appreciate that. Because they ain't getting it back. <laughs> so Kamiyama here, even though he's standing right here, is just gonna make us a grappling hook. That's the wonderness of the Kamiyama twins. And we're then going to go back to Hamazaki, and he's going to go tell us to hide the grappling hook in a manhole that's in the corner over here. And this is going to begin the next big long set piece. And this is why Saijima is a really fascinating character, because if you if you go into the series like I did with OG Yakuza 1, then the first three games only feature Kiryu. And then this game starts with two brand new characters in Akiyama and Saijima, and... They actually play really differently. And in Saijima's case, kind of hard at first. If you don't get these triple charging finishes, you don't have that much in terms of hyper armor. So you get interrupted by a lot of attacks from certain enemies, like Saito here. Uh, and this guy. We don't like Saito around these parts. Saito has been very, very nasty to me lately. I'm just going to take you down. Yeah. I'm just going to take you down, Saito. I don't want to deal with you today. I really don't. <sighs> so, once we take down the initial group of guards, going to grab the keycard off of Saito. Not the last time you're going to see him, unfortunately. Saito is the one boss in this game that isn't going to get the baseball bat. Ah! One of two. <laughs> You'll see the second in the next chapter. Oh, boy. Again, you want to hopefully get multiple enemies, but I don't like you guarding the dodge until it hits there, because you're not going to go down. So I just have to do another charge attack. I don't know why sometimes Saiju... I don't know why Saiju returned that way either, because it's not like this guy was over there. I don't know why I do that kind of way, I know better than that. Stamina X is okay. Uh, I'm going to be taking a couple of healing items in here for the finale. There's two ways to do the finale. There's a new way with the baseball map method that I'm not massively confident on, so I'm not going to risk it. So I'm going to need a couple of heat restorative items, which the Stamina X is do. If I can come out of this set piece of at least two, which I definitely will now, then I will be safe for the finale. Now... Said we weren't done with him. Here comes the second round of Saito. Saito in this fight has a very long mid-fight feel the heat. It takes about a minute and a half. You will see me just do this move right here. Yes, it's slow. Yes, it's long. It means that Saito doesn't get off the ground, and that's important. If Saito gets up at any point at this point, I am going to lose a minute and a half to a minute and 45 seconds. Yes, this is the slow method. I do not care. <laughs> I do not like this fight. Saito is awful to fight against. I like him being in the corner, but I kind of led him away from the corner. It sucks. I got very lucky with one of my hits earlier, I'm not going to lie. You are kidding me. Ah, I hate this Saito so much. <laughs> so much. Because, as you can see, this is a mash one, so it's not skippable. I feel it. I hate Saito. Ouch. It's been worse than seeing this, at least. Ah, how? It's long. It sucks. It's not as long as a minute and a half. I can obviously overestimate it, but... Yeah. It's a really nasty time loss. It's one that you don't want to take. Saito always causing me problems in runs every single run. So that's the stamina next. And we're going to meet up with Hamazaki at the Warden's office. I knew he was going to hyper armor through that, so I wanted to just cancel that and just do that move there. That's fine. 
Uh, I need to get Essence of Finishing and Combo. Combo, yeah. So, we level up in that fight. That's going to get us a new set of level ups. We need, very importantly, Essence of Finishing and Combo Speed Boost, which obviously makes us faster in combat. That's going to be very useful for this chapter and the next one, and free, actually. Yeah, and free. There is a sniper. The sniper will take aim at us and shoot at us. There are safe spots you can hide behind. We don't need those, but the big problem that we have in this bit is actually a different enemy. It's actually the enemy to our left, that guy. That guy throws stun grenades. I don't know why Sidema turned around. There's the stun grenade. I wouldn't have been able to break the door even if Sidema didn't turn around there, but obviously, anytime Sidema turns, it sucks. The nice thing is, by going through the door at that time, it resets the sniper's obviously aim. He's now going to get taken out by Hamazaki, who did find the thing that he wanted in the warden's office, by the way. You'll find out what that is in about an hour's time. <laughs> Take a while. Yeah, stun grenades. It's random whether you get hit by the stun grenade or not. You usually do. It sucks. They're too far out of the way to deal with before dealing with the door, unfortunately. But they have, like, the most amazing aim you've ever seen on them. So, we're finally get, gonna get into a fight with Hamazaki at our side. Take care of all these guys. A lot of these enemies will also grab you, so just be careful. I don't know where you're going, but I'll take care of you while you're going this way. Very rarely, an enemy will go down that corridor to the left. If you saw there, I used my charge attack at the right time to get through this guy's attack with some hyper armor. Not dead somehow. One HP. Frustrating. Should have done the uh, charge attack. Oh. And we're going to get out to the courtyard, where for the third and final time in this chapter, here's Saito. Thankfully, this one's much easier. Because, as you can see on the right, one of the enemies in this fight has a gun. This guy. Wanted to hit Saito, but that's unfortunate. I don't mind not hitting the guards, because as you can see, the guards are all very weak. That guy did not go down. I should have done the finish on the Your rest of the finishing against bosses will do a lot of damage the first time around. Okay, that wasn't a bad end fight, at least. The rest of the set piece was a bit meh, but that wasn't a bad end set piece. Okay, so. <laughs> Saitama is, as I said, a very different character, a little unwieldy to use. Saitama escapes from prison, but unfortunately falls into the ocean and winds up, wouldn't you believe it, at an orphanage. An orphanage run by a certain Kazuma Kiryu. So, the problem with Saitama is... You've barely had time to get used to this new character. He's a massive physical powerhouse. He plays very differently to every other character that's in the game. So, you haven't had much time to get used to him. You've had about 15 minutes of gameplay. The other problem that you have is you don't get many healing items from the previous set piece. A lot of people, when they first play this game, if they play it on hard, actually struggle with that set piece because there are certain elements like Saito that make it genuinely hard. So... You will get here with essentially only a couple of healing items. There's only one thing that you do in this chapter. Only one thing. I can't believe RGG had the actual nerve to do this. It's amazing. You can probably tell what this is building up to. Because Kiryu knows this guy just escaped from prison. 
Fun fact about this fight that I'm really hoping you don't get to see. Q has the Tiger Drop. This is a full-powered Kiryu. When Kiryu goes into his red heat, he will start Tiger Dropping you. I hope to never see that. I'm going to concentrate on this fight so that I don't mess it up. So if you mess this up in any way, this fight is very, very hard. I'm pushing Kiryu this way so that he doesn't do any shenanigans. I have already messed up by not getting my heat points. My heat points. Thank you. Oh, you. Oh, you. Pushing the grabs. Oh, he's doing it. Oh, this, this is the problem with the Kiri fight. I can't grab him now. If he goes into his red phase, I'm in trouble. If I punch him once more, I can actually get the mid fight KT, which will hopefully help. I have not been doing well at this fight recently. I've been actually struggling with this fight a lot. I'm going to intentionally do this one. So I do a bit of damage. It's a bit slower, but by doing a little bit of damage, I might be able to finish this fight without seeing red feet. Which, ugh. Not a good Kiryu fight. You ideally don't want to see any of those cutscenes. You want to keep Kiryu on the ground the entire time. I've not been doing well at that fight recently. I've really not. <laughs> I knew going into this that I was going to struggle on that fight. That fight is a bit of an Achilles heel for me at the minute in regards to this run. So, here's what it is. And that's all there is to this chapter, is you just fight Kiryu. But Kiryu kind of understands that, you know, Saijima here, who's using the alias Suzuki, he's not... He's not who he says he is. He's obviously a prisoner, and obviously with a back tattoo, he knows he's Yakuza. Um, and he kind of gets a little bit of the truth out of Saijima, and knows that Saijima is going back to Kamurocho. So... All of this time since Saijima's been gone from Kamurocho, and he's finally back. I, now, this is where Saijima... This is where Saijima's entire part changes up. I don't know why my text skip button wasn't working there. That was weird. We're going to try and find some members of our old family. Before we do that, we're going to go and buy an item that we're going to need for the actual story. Which is a bottle of sake. That locker key on the ground is a new pickup later on in the run. Uh, yeah, I've got enough. Two? Yeah, that's fine. I've got enough stamina Xs that I need for the finale. I've got enough heat regen stuff. Ideally, you only need the one, but two is good. Okay, part of one. Once again, taxi list is reversed in this game. I have to, I have to be very careful to remember that, that it's actually reversed. And I have to go to the right place. So... Down this little alleyway here is where his family's office used to be. As you can see, there's not much here anymore. This guy is going to tell us about somebody who used to be with the family a long time ago who's now homeless and hanging out around in the underground, which is a brand new area for Yakuza 4. There's two new areas in Kamurocho that were introduced in Yakuza 4, the underground and the rooftops. And as you can see, Sideman doesn't have that much money, but thankfully we don't actually need that much on Sideman. In the old route, we needed a tiny bit of money on Sideman, but with the new route, we genuinely don't care. We're about to make more money than we need. Which is great. So, here's the guy we've got to speak to. He only spawns in after that Ooh. previous conversation. Oh. He wants a bottle of sake. And there we go. So, he's going to tell us that he doesn't know much about the Sasai family, the family that we used to come from. However, he's going to tell us an area where we can get some info, which is actually West Park, which is on the east side of the map. Don't worry about it. We're obviously going to go taxi back up there. Actually, no, we're going to the Champion District first. That's right. No, Champion District first. If you get this bit wrong. We're after a certain group of Yakuza that used to be around, uh, that the Sasai family was really up in arms with. The Shibata family, you might remember, were giving Akiyama some grief earlier. And we know that their family office is over in the Champion District, where we're going to see a bit of a familiar face. Oops. Just a fraction of a second too early. Here's Kido. Kido, weirdly enough, is fighting some of the Shibata family. 
Hido also understands that he probably doesn't want to fight Saijima, considering, you know, Saijima is built like a bear. Which means we're going to get into our next chase segment. Speaking of things that I am bad at recently, this chase segment. <laughs> I'm going to try and get Kido stuck on the bike. I messed up myself. I need to get two hits there. I'm surprised he didn't kick that at me. He's going to start running in a second if I'm not careful. Nice, I got a spare hit in. You don't usually get that spare hit in, so that's very lucky. Haven't done enough damage for the quick strap, so... Have to do the old, the old fashioned way. Is this bottle. Uh, why are you still running, Kido? I just cancel him out of his chase animation. I actually did. That's impressive. How does that even happen? How did that hit connect? Whoa, Kido. Those will always miss. I'm just trying to get him to stop earlier. How did I... How did I actually get him out of his... Wait, what? How did that miss? How did I actually cancel his chase animation? Huh. It's not good. It's very bad. Very slow. <laughs> How did I... Hmm. It's very slow. It's actually very, very slow. You do not want to do that. So... This is where Saijima's route is going to start to change from the old route dramatically. With Saijima's final boss, who, ironically enough, you're looking at... We need to get a weapon to cancel out his two heals. We used to grab a specific locker key for a weapon because, ironically enough, it's so perfectly placed. See that locker key glistening above us in that top distance on that sign? That's the locker key we used to grab. It is a hyper stun gun. You get the hyper stun gun from these coin lockers. There are two sets of coin lockers in Yakuza 4. The above ground ones here and the underground ones. In the new round, we need the underground ones. And we don't need that weapon anymore because, would you believe it, on Saijima, we're also going to get a couple of baseball bats. Oh boy. You can't go down here without Kido, so you have to wait until Kido catches up. In this little bit, you can kind of push him forward a tiny bit. Also push him backwards, just be aware of that. You might recognize this area. This is where we fought Midoriya Kawa earlier. This is going to be Saijima's hideout. So, Kido doesn't know much about the Sasai family, but he's going to tell us about the legendary informant. The legendary informant who knows the entirety of Kamurocho. You know him, you love him, it's the florist. We've been told where the florist used to hang out, which is obviously East Park in the West. But as we go up here, we're going to be... We're going to be absconded to a different area. Now, the nice thing about this is this is going to take us to an area that actually will enable Saijima to get his baseball bats. Oh, yeah. We're going to be grabbing an item coming up here. I'm fairly certain that in the in the new route, everything that you're seeing here coming up with Saijima is going to get routed out. I'm fairly certain that... I, I feel personally that this money route for this, this... This route is new. This route is new by like two or three days, by the way. This new money route is... Honestly, in my opinion, for Saijima, slow. Very slow. So, I think that it's... The Saijima part is going to get changed up a bit. It's probably going to get the locker key from the Popo that I pointed out earlier that a different character gets. Because with that other character, you can make it through their part without buying any... Getting any extra money for baseball bats. But it does get quite tight. And you do have to transfer bats from other characters. This is an illusion of choice. You have to help. This is Saijima's Move Master. So, we just have to take care of these punks. There's only three of them. They all go down in a single combo. Guy. If you don't like them guarding, that sucks. I'll just essence of finishing to end him. It's unfortunate, but at least it's a quick way to end the actual fight. 
You'll see in this cutscene, if you look at the floor very carefully at points, there is a shining object on the floor. Right there. I'm very surprised we never got this in previous iterations of this run. But honestly, the reason is that this locker key is going to take us very far out of the way. This coin locker key that is in front of us is a coin locker key for the underground coin lockers. And you've actually already seen them once in this run. Remember the guy that we gave the Saki to at the start of this chapter? That's where they are. Which is a big pain because they're really out of the way. And unfortunately, Saijima's next chapter is going to be very... Very painful. Saijima's next chapter is essentially something like a six to seven minute long walking section. A walking section that can game over you. Causing you to lose a lot of time. We have to speak to that guy specifically. He knows about the florist and then we can go and find the florist ourselves. The Axa games are very, very peculiar in keeping you on the actual pathway that it wants you to go down in terms of story beats. There's one bit in the next chapter where you can actually skip out completely on one of Saijima's story triggers. But the problem with that is it doesn't load in the rest of the story bits afterwards. You have to specifically get that story trigger, which is a massive pain because... If you could just run past and then, like, go to the next story bit, it would save so much time. You get free roam, but at the cost of not being able to move the story. So, it's a massive shame. Have to be careful of fight spawns here. The good old Vincent Crossroads, even though that's not Vincent anymore. That's a fight spawn. Around behind it. Cool. So, we're going to get to... The bathroom entrance, which we all know is the old secret entrance to the actual underground area to Purgatory. But unfortunately, we're going to find that they're building a building there. There is no way to actually get to Purgatory from there. So we're going to have to start from square one and try and find out where the florist is. This is where Yakuza 4 gets a little bit obscure in what you have to do. There is one specific NPC you need to speak to. If you stay to the left here, you avoid that substory. It's quite tight, that line on avoiding that substory, but if you stick to the left, you're fine. We're going to speak to this worker right here. This guy is the guy that you have to speak to, and it's a pain because Yakuza 4 doesn't tell you that this guy is the one you need to speak to. You can go around the entire city trying to look for this guy. The Yakuza series is a little too obtuse for its own good at times with its waypoints, and this is one of those times, unfortunately. So he says he was hearing a lot of singing and dancing coming from the sewers over here. Unfortunately, there's a group of thugs in the way. Now you might be wondering why I didn't go get the baseball bats yet, despite having the gold locker key. The only extra fight we'd be able to do with those baseball bats is this one. There's a fight coming up at the end of this chapter where we can't use weapons. I'm going to wrap this guy around this tree if I can, but he's not doing it, so instead I'll do the old-fashioned way of punch him in the face. Nice guards. Fight him. This is definitely not going well. Yeah, this is definitely not going well. Hmm, rough fight. So, they're now going to get out of the way. They're just random folks. They are literally just random folks. And here's the manholes in this game. They're all covered by these covers. Some characters, Saijima and Kiryu, are strong enough to open them as is. I'm not actually sure about Kiryu. But for Akiyama and the third character that you haven't seen yet, Tanamura, they're not strong enough to open the manhole covers on their own. So, they need a special tool which we only get in the finale. So they don't have full access to the sewers. Saijima and technically Kiryu does. The area Little Asia at the top right of the map is also similarly blocked off. Certain characters can only go into Little Asia and it's only those that can speak Chinese, of which Akiyama, Kiryu and Saijima cannot. But Tanamura, who you'll meet very soon, can. 
So this is, of course, Purgatory. Underground Pleasure Dome for the rich. This is, of course, the florist. If you know anything about the florist, he has his surveillance network with homeless people. He's going to do the usual test, go in the Colosseum, prove your worth, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> We're going to do that. That's the reason why you can't bring weapons in here, is this Colosseum is much like OG1 in that you can't use weapons in the Colosseum. Cool. So, we're going to speak to the forest again. And say we're ready. We used to say we're broke to the guy, but now we're going to get more money than we'll ever need. This is Ivan Ibrahimovic. This, much like the Kiryu fight, is very easy to mess up. So I'm going to concentrate on this a little bit. Save yourself, Ivan. Yeah. Yeah, this is... yeah, I was a bit worried. I will use my finishing when it will end the fight. When I'm sure it will end the fight. Just like that. one or two more punches. Ivan is much like the Kiryu fight in that if you let Ivan get up off the floor, he's going to do a really long move and cutscene against us. So we, don't, we don't like Ivan. <laughs> we don't want to deal with Ivan's shenanigans, so we keep him on the floor for as long as possible. Chapter 4 is Saijima's longest chapter, I think? No. Although maybe not anymore with the new route. Um, but it is <laughs> slightly pointless in places. It's a pain. Um... There's only two fights left, and they all come at the end of this uh, chapter, which is going to come in like ten uh, odd minutes. It's going to take us a while to get there. This is also this is also the part where we get the potential story skip I said out earlier, but it doesn't help us in the run, which sucks. Here's Saijima's old his old patriarch, who's unfortunately fallen on hard times, and obviously has a little bit of Alzheimer's as well. So. Florist. The Florist helped us out there by getting our old patriarch. We're now going to go and see a man who Saijima believes betrayed him a long, long time ago when he got thrown in prison. His good old Anarchy Majima. So, this bit right here, you can actually get to this um, manhole before that previous cutscene. If you do that, you've skipped the story beat, and until you come back and get that story beat on that bridge, you will not be able to progress. And here comes the very, very long walking segment. So, this next bit is kind of like a... It's almost like a puzzle in some cases. Um, where we're only allowed to walk down certain pathways. Uh, before we do that, here's, a, here's an interesting character coming up. This is Sadachi. Now for the Sadachi Dojo. Have to follow into the dojo. This is another big long mini game that Yakuza 4 has, and it's exclusive to Yakuza 4, where you have to train a bunch of lazy or weak students to become masters in the dojo. There's a bunch of like different stats and stuff that you can do, like little little mini games. Like we're not gonna do that. <laughs> like casually, it takes a very long time to do. We're obviously not gonna do that. And now you'll see on my minimap in this section, there are certain pink blobs. Those are the police. If we get too close to the police, the game will give us a warning. If we do it twice or we get caught by the police, that is going to be a game over. And we restart, no matter where we are, at the Sadachi Dojo. We do not want to mess this bit up. And this is where I get to talk to you about cop skip. The, the skip that we don't use. See that cop there? If you can get NPCs to push him specifically to the side of the road that we're on, you can sneak through the left. The problem with that is that obviously NPC spawns are random and it's also very random whether or not they push him to the left, even uh, to the right even. Even worse, they can push him to the left, so to the right even, which, no, to the left even. If he gets pushed to the left, there's some weird thing about it. His hitbox is enough to cover the entirety of the street, but one side of him, his left, aka the right-hand side, is a little bigger than the other side. So if the NPCs push him the other way, then you cannot get any kind of skip at all. 
If you were to get cop skip there, you'd only save about 30 seconds. So... It's not exactly worth it. You'd basically just be skipping this uh, rooftop segment. Now, this is where Saejima's part is going to differ immensely. We're going to go down to, again, the underground parking lot. And we're going to be taking a detour over here. So of carrying on. This detour is going to lead us to the underground mall. As we said earlier, as you know, we're going to specifically go to the coin lockers. And we're going to get our thing from it. It's on the other side. I was blind there. The coin locker item that we get is the gold plate. This sells for 100,000 yen. And thankfully, when we go up these stairs, we are literally right outside ever soon. You'll see on the minimap there are a couple of cops around, but thankfully, they are all absolutely blind and do not see you running across here. Not even this one directly to our left. So, in we go. Hear this out. Uh, I'm going to sell my healing items as well for space for bats. My stamina and stay because I need heat regen items. And then we go and grab ourselves, would you believe, all of the metal bats that we can carry. We're not going to need all of those. We've got some spare on Saejima. And let me just go back. Uh, no, we don't. We go this way. This way is much quicker. So... We'll be using this staircase a couple of times in the run as well. Um, the rooftops are nice. There are no police on the roof. Also, there are no fight spawns on the roof at any point either. So I'm going to be taking a couple of detours around here. Darting down this way past everybody here. And this is where the pathway leads you to in the first place. This bit right here. Essentially, it's a small detour to get baseball bats. This is where the camera tricking really helps to despawn NPCs. There's a specific policeman coming up in a tiny bit up here where a civilian can spawn in front of you and block you from going into the car park that's here. Yes, it's happened to me twice. It is infuriating. It is literally like a four-minute loss. It is absolutely terrible. So... music in this bit at least and with this we get to the end and we're back at the hideout let me speak to Kido again so here's Minami see you soon Minami Minami is obviously of the Majima family as you saw earlier and we're getting him to give him a message just warning Majima that you know his blood brother who got incarcerated 25 years ago. He's back and he's angry. <laughs> so. Wouldn't be a Yakuza game without a Majima fight after all. Back into the safe house we go. We're going to speak to Kido. And by doing this, you have activated Saejima's finale. So, we're now locked in completely to the finale. Now... Even though we're literally right below the Millennium Tower, which is where we have to go, you'll see that there is a policeman in the way, and if you thought the last walking section was fun, guess what? Do it again. But backwards. I'm not joking. Literally, if they see you, it's game over. I don't know who decided this would be a good idea to make you do it twice. No. <laughs> This is why this walking section is long and a pain. And this ain't the worst walking section with Saejima that you're seeing tonight. 
Give it like three hours. <laughs> hmm. Boy, oh boy. I do love Yakuza 5, but we have a conversation about Yakuza 5 to have later, let me tell you. So yeah, we're taking the pretty much the same pathway backwards. We're going to change up a little bit in a second. There's a quicker route that we can go. We used to do this route in the old way because this way led to where you can get to the weapon van, actually. Uh, but because we don't use the weapon van anymore, the weapon van isn't actually going to be up there. But obviously, we have enough baseball bats that it doesn't matter. So, the game wants us to go down there. We're not. We're going to go this way. Go down this way. This way is much faster. Much faster. Make sure we go this way. You'll see that the uh, the map is a bit confused. It's telling us to go back up the top, which, as you can see, we actually can't. So, down into the underground. Back into the parking lot. See, the map is still not telling us where to go because it is still confused as to where we are. We shouldn't really be down here, but... We do have to go down here eventually so that we can get to again. Silvers! So some low-poly rat. There he was. Good lad. Like our low-poly rat. It's a sign of good luck. And with that, we're going to get to the other side, which is going to be the... Huh. That's not good. Every light in my room just flickered. I'm sure the webcam picked that up. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh boy. But this manhole takes us right in front of the Millennium Tower. Beautiful. So. Baseball bats. Baseball bats. We still want to try and save as many baseball bats in here as possible. You have to feel for the poor security guard at the back there by the lifts who's just like, I'm not getting involved in this. I wouldn't if I was him either, to be honest. Alright, so, again, we're going to try and make sure we hit multiple enemies. Having enemies walk towards us here is obviously really nice, so we're trying to we're trying to get many enemies grouped together like this, which is nice. Your last hit and the first hit are the ones that do, like, the most damage. The second hit and the fourth hit will always stun. Turn, please. It's a little finicky as well at times, unfortunately. Bats. So every single fight that I'm doing, I'm obviously keeping an eye on which bats I've used and which bats I still have left. I do not like the way these guys are set up at the minute. Okay. Does that keep the bat because it transitioned to the new phase? I think it did, didn't it? No, it didn't. That's a shame. Would have been nice. I would have had an extra swing on it. You can cancel out of being grabbed with the flurry, which is nice, but unfortunately you can get everybody there. It's really hard sometimes to aim where to go with the flurry. That's why I like to do a normal attack first, because that actually locks onto the enemy that you have hit. Look at this angle. Everyone's oh, all over the place. Once again, ideally, I want to leave Saijima's section with three baseball bats that are full. Shall not get this guy either? Okay. Thought it'd be worth just using normal attacks against them. Three normal enemies to remain in this part. Four with large HP bars. A little upset that I didn't take care of you. Just 
just trying to get a few hits on Minami ahead of time. Nice punch. This guy on the floor, we're just gonna finish. And then use a normal base bat. Minami, hopefully again, will only be two baseball bats. I'm going to put my other base bats on now so I don't have to worry about that during this fight. Uh, should be good. Oh, on baseball bats. Minami has a very, very longer wind-up in this fight, so this is a very more important fight to not let Minami be on his feet at all. Which I in the first place, but it's a bit slow. That is also going to use up the durability on my back. If you get interrupted during your attack, it uses up the durability, which is a shame. Unfortunately, this phase of Minami sucks. It's really hard to fight against. Even with the baseball bat, it has massive high armor and doesn't care what you do. Also, because I started next to him, he's just gonna attack me a couple of times. Oh, that's got him. Okay, need to replace baseball bats. Yeah, I used up the durability. Uh, that one might be okay. I kind of need to start by getting a baseball bat out. So, up D-pad for that one. I guess I just start with the guard and do the first flurry, I guess, and then replace. Not ideal, but that's fine. I don't know why Majima's tattoos are fluorescent in the scene that they are. They glow in the dark. <laughs> Majima just recently had his tattoos touched up. I could see Majima 100% getting glow in the dark tattoos. <laughs> that's, that's a thing that he would absolutely do. But as you can see, it definitely makes this bit. A bit, you know. By the numbers. That's what you're expecting to happen, that's what you got. So I don't get the opportunity to hit him really hard, but thankfully he is stunned for a tiny bit, so I have to go fast. Really? I need to hit these last hits, I need to get into a wall. Nice, interrupted the cutting. Excuse me, brother, that's enough. Uh, I believe it's four full baseball mats left and one with four, so that's good. That's enough for Saijima's finale. Okay. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, okay. I can't remember if Akiyama had enough. Now comes the part of the speedrun that I hate the most, uh, because there's a lot of text mashing for voiced conversations. Here's Majima with two eyes. That's how you can tell it's a cutscene in the past. So, this is the story all about how Majima's eye got gouged out. This is something that happened 25 years ago. This is just before the hit that Saijima carries out, where Majima was mysteriously missing for it. Majima got called out here by one of the other Tojo families. Good old Shibata. Good old Shibata here knows what's going on and he knows the hit's about to go down. He's saying that there is a traitor and that they are going to try and stop Majima and Saijima and that they need to try and stop this hit. Sasai has Sasai has uh, links to the Ueno Seiwa. They're coming back into it. And unfortunately, Shibata is the one behind all of this. He's the one that takes Majima's eye. That's the reason that Majima didn't turn up for the hit. The reason why Majima, Majima, the reason why Saijima got arrested, and also the reason why Majima doesn't have his other eye. And here's the game's third playable character. This is Tanamura. He's a police officer. Not the best of police officers. Uh, he is referred to as the roach, essentially, of Camaro PD. I need to be very careful in this bit because there's a lot of differences with Tanamura's. Tanamura's entire part is completely different. I need to grab this locker key here. It's very important. And it's the bats first, isn't it? Yes. It's the bats here and then later on. So we're going to be very tight on money in terms of Tanamura's part to begin with. So we need to be a bit careful. We're going to be going to Ebisu. At this part, what we need to do is get two silver plates. You can do that in two ways. Either play Mahjong, which I love, but is too slow. Or... Uh, six, yep. 
or buy two fake silver plates from Ebisu. As you can see, this leaves us with very little money. But we can use these fake silver plates instead of playing Mahjong. It's what the RGG devs put in the game for people who don't know how to play Mahjong. But we were here yesterday playing Mahjong with a couple of the regulars. And somebody snitched just out to our bosses on the force. At this point, Tanamura wants to know who did it. This guy won't tell us until we get him those silver plates. We give him the fake silver plates. He realizes they're... The silver plates that are fake, but he doesn't care at this point, so... He's going to tell us the person that actually snitched on us is a guy called Mr. Try and Hit Me. If you've ever done any of the sub-stories of some of the Yakuza games, you might recognize that name. It is the same Mr. Try and Hit Me. So, we're about to go and end that man's career. We're going to go to East Park Boulevard. I'm going to intentionally speak to an NPC on the way to get a little bit of extra experience early on. I don't actually think I need it on... Tanamura, but it will help a tiny bit. Now, this is Tanamura's supposedly tutorial. So, Mr. Try and Hit Me is thankfully not as hard as the Mr. Try and Hit Me's of sub stories past. There he is, right here. Usually, he says if anyone can hit him in a bet, he pays out money, but obviously, we're not doing that. So, Tanamura has access to a couple of really unique abilities. One of which is a parry, which parries every single attack. We oh, don't care about that. We're just going to hit Mr. Try and hit me with a baseball bat. Didn't factor in those, did you, buddy? Now, thankfully, because that didn't end the animation, that keeps my bat's durability at full, which means I still have two flurries on that bat. So as we leave, we're going to get tutorialized on a new piece of Tanamura's gameplay, which is the radio system. The radio will basically give us a bunch of missions around town. They're all essentially just do a fight. And it gets you a little bit of reward, some EXP. It's going to tie into somebody that we're going to meet after this guy.